Welcome to Walking with the Word, the Bible in 365. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your words of truth and life. And I pray by the power of your spirit, you would set these words deep within us and that we would share the story of your redemption, whether in the scripture or a story of our life with another person over this week. We love you, Lord. And I just pray this in your name, that we would be disciple makers, that we would be people bringing light where there is darkness. We love you, Jesus, and pray this again in your name, Jesus. Amen. Today we are reading Judges 10, Psalm 44, and Judges 11. Judges 10. After Abimelech, there arose to save Israel Tola, the son of Pua, son of Dodo, a man of Issachar. And he lived at Shamer in the hill country of Ephraim. And he judged Israel 23 years. Then he died and was buried at Shamer. After him arose Jair, the Gileadite, who judged Israel 22 years. And he had 30 sons who rode on 30 donkeys. And they had 30 cities called Havath Jair to this day, which are in the land of Gilead. And Jair died and was buried in Camon. The people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baal and the Asheroth and the gods of Syria, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the Ammonites and the gods of the Philistines. And they forsook the Lord and did not serve him. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel and he sold them into the hand of the Philistines and into the hand of the Ammonites and they crushed and oppressed the people of Israel that year. For 18 years, they oppressed all the people of Israel who were beyond the Jordan in the land of the Ammonites which is in Gilead. And the Ammonites crossed the Jordan to fight also against Judah and against Benjamin and against the house of Ephraim so that Israel was severely distressed. And all the people of Israel cried out to the Lord saying, we have sinned against you because we have forsaken our God and served the Baals. And the Lord said to the people of Israel, did I not save you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites and from the Ammonites and from the Philistines? The Sidians also and the Amalekites and the Moanites oppressed you and you cried out to me and I saved you out of their hand, yet you have forsaken me and served other gods. Therefore, I will save you no more. Go and cry out to the gods whom you have chosen. Let them save you in the time of your distress. And the people of Israel said to the Lord, we have sinned. Do to us whatever seems good to you. Only please deliver us this day. So they put away the foreign gods from among them and served the Lord. And he became impatient over the misery of Israel. Then the Ammonites were called to arms and they encamped in Gilead. And the people of Israel came together and they encamped at Mizpah. And the people, the leaders of Gilead, said to one another, Who is this man who will begin to fight against the Ammonites? He shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Psalm 44, O oh God, we have heard with our ears. Our fathers have told us what deeds you performed in their days, in the days of old. You, with your own hand, drove out the nations, but them you planted. You afflicted the peoples, but them you set free. For not by their own sword did they win the land, nor did their own arm save them, but your right hand and your arm and the light of your face. For you delighted in them. You are my king, O oh God ordain salvation for Jacob. Though we push down our foes through your name, we tread down those who rise up against us. For not in my bow do I trust, nor can my sword save me. But you have saved us from our foes and have put shame to those who hate us. In God we have boasted continually, and we will give thanks to your name forever. Selah. But you have rejected us and disgraced us and have not gone out with our armies. You have made us turn back back from the foe, and those who hate us have gotten spoiled. You have made us like sheep for the slaughter, and have scattered us among the nations. You have sold your people for a trifle, demanding no high price for them. You have made us the taunt of our neighbors, the derision and scorn of those around us. You have made us a byword among the nations, a laughingstock among the peoples. All day long, my disgrace is before me, and shame has covered my face at the sound of 
of the taunter and the reviler at the sight of the enemy and the avenger. All this has come upon us, though we have not forgotten you, and we have not been false to your covenant. Our heart has not turned back, nor have our steps departed from your way. Yet you have broken us in the place of jackals and covered us with the shadow of death. If we had forgotten the name of our God or spread out our hands to a foreign God, would not God discover this? For he knows the secrets of the heart. Yet for your sake we are killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. Awake, why are you sleeping, O Lord? Rouse yourself. Do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face? Why do you forget our affliction and oppression? For our soul is bowed down to the dust. Our belly clings to the ground. Rise up. Come to our help. Redeem us for the sake of your steadfast love. Can you imagine praying that way? Maybe we should all just start praying like that. Okay, Judges 11. Now Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty warrior, but he was the son of a prostitute. Gilead was the father of Jephthah, and Gilead's wife also bore him sons. And when his wife's sons grew up, they drove Jephthah out and said to him, You shall not have an inheritance in our father's house, for you are the son of another woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brothers and lived in the land of Tob. And worthless fellows collected around Jephthah and went out with him. After a time, the Ammonites made war against Israel. And when the Ammonites made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to bring Jephthah from the land of Tob. And they said to Jephthah, Come and be our leader, that we may fight against the Ammonites. But Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, Did you not hate me and drive me out of my father's house? Why have you come to me now when you are in distress? And the elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, that is why we have turned to you now, that you may go with us and fight against the Ammonites and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, if you bring me home again to fight against the Ammonites and the Lord gives them over to me, I will be your head. And the elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, the Lord will be witness between us if we do not do as you say. So Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead and the people made him head and leader over them. And Jephthah spoke all his words before the Lord at Mizpah. Then Jephthah sent messengers to the king of the Ammonites and said, What do you have against me that you have come to fight against my land? And the king of the Ammonites answered the messengers of Jephthah, Because Israel, on coming up from Egypt, took away my land from the Arnon to the Jabbok and to the Jordan. Now therefore restore it peaceably. Jephthah again sent messengers to the king of the Ammonites and said to him, Thus says Jephthah, Israel did not take away the land of Moab or the land of the Ammonites. But when they came up from Egypt, Israel went through the wilderness to the Red Sea and came to Kadesh. Israel then sent messengers to the king of Edom saying, Please let us pass through your land. But the king of Edom would not listen. And they sent also to the king of Moab, but he would not consent. So Israel remained at Kadesh. Then they journeyed through the wilderness and went around the land of Edom and the land of Moab and arrived on the east side of the land of Moab and camped on the other side of the Arnon. But they did not enter the territory of Moab for Arnon was the boundary of Moab. Israel then sent messengers to Sihon, king of the Amorites, king of Heshbon, and Israel said to him, please let us pass through your land to our country. But Sihon did not trust Israel to pass through his territory. So Sihon gathered all his people together and encamped at Jahaz and fought with Israel. And the Lord, the God of Israel, gave Sihon and all his people into the hand of Israel, and they defeated them. So Israel took possession of all the land of the Amorites who inhabited that country. And they took possession of all the territory of the Amorites from the Arnon to the Jabbok and from the wilderness to the Jordan. So then the Lord, the God of Israel, dispossessed the Amorites from before his people, Israel. And are you to take possession of them? Will you not possess what shall your God gives you to possess. All the Lord our God has dispossessed before us, we will possess. Now, are you any better than Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he ever contend against Israel or did he ever go to war with them? While Israel lived in Heshbon and its villages and in Aor and its villages and in all the cities that are on the banks of the Arnon, 300 years, why did you not deliver them within that time? 
I therefore have not sinned against you, and you do me wrong by making war on me. The Lord, the judge, decide this day between the people of Israel and the people of Ammon. But the king of the Ammonites did not listen to the words of Jephthah that he sent to him. Then the spirit of the Lord was upon Jephthah, and he passed through Gilead and Manasseh and passed on to Mizpah of Gilead. And from Mizpah of Gilead, he passed on to the Ammonites. And Jephthah made a vow to the Lord and said, if you will give the Ammonites into my hand, then whatever comes out from the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the Ammonites shall be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. So Jephthah crossed over to the Ammonites to fight against them, and the Lord gave them into his hand, and he struck them from Aror to the neighborhood of Minith, twenty cities as far as Abel Kermem, with a great blow. So the Ammonites were subdued before the people of Israel. Then Jephthah came to his home at Mizpah, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with tambourines and with dances. She was his only child. Besides her, he had neither son nor daughter. And as soon as he saw her, he tore his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, you have brought me very low, and you have become the cause of a great trouble for me, for I have opened my mouth to the Lord, and I cannot take back my vow. And she said to him, My father, you have opened your mouth to the Lord. Do to me according to to what has gone out of your mouth now that the Lord has avenged you on your enemies on the Ammonites. So she said to her father, let this thing be done for me. Leave me alone for two months that I may go up and down on the mountains and weep for my virginity. Then he sent her away for two months and she departed, she and her companions, and wept for her virginity on the mountains. And at the end of the two months, she returned to her father who did with her according to his vow that he had made. She had never known a man and it became a custom in Israel that the daughters of Israel went year by year to lament the daughter of Jephthah, the Gileadite, four days in the year.